think as a songwriter, normally I'm writing with an artist and that's when you get to really talk to them and find out what's in their heart to say and how do you help them express that. And I think it's very specific to that artist in the room. But sometimes we can just write songs and they'll just sit there and no one will ever record them. Between the Grooves is hosted by James Curtis, music director and morning man in the greater Toronto area on Joy Radio. And Aisha Woods, Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, and musician. Together, they talk with artists and industry insiders to discover our connection between music and faith. You can connect with us on Facebook or Twitter, at Between Grooves. Now, here's James and Aisha. Well, Aisha, this is the last stop on our road trip. (laughs) So we have to wait until next summer to get some more uh, festival conversations going? Well, certainly summer festival conversation, sure. But we could do this anytime. We could do this anytime. Anytime an artist is in town or you and I get together, we can have a chat with somebody on the road. I just love doing that. I mean, I, I will... Let's go on the road. I will chat with an artist before or after their you know, stage time at any concert, any day, yes. if I can. Yeah, Like, it's just, to me, that's just the it's, raw conversation that you would never get yep. necessarily, you know? Nothing scripted, sure nothing, you know, pre-planned right. or anything like that. Right. I love it, too. It's it's so good. And it makes for better conversation. Absolutely. Every time when it's not scripted and not planned necessarily. So, right. So this is another we're one. we into it with today. Mitch Wong from Integrity Music. Uh, had some good chat, so you're just stuck with me now. I love it. Um, for you, um, uh, this is, I'm assuming this is kind of a new experience for you as far as a music festival is concerned? Yes. This is my first one. Okay, and so yeah. what's the experience been like for you so far? Well, I just got off the plane, and we got Chick-fil-A on the way here. Yeah. And we just got here. Okay, okay. <laughs> so okay. I haven't really experienced much yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. I, I enjoy the festivals... I enjoy all the activity and the hustle and the bustle. Um, I find it just really exhausting, though, because it's go, go, go. Yes. And yesterday, I think, was like a 14-hour day. And wow. S- and so you finally crash at the end of the day, and you're exhausted, and then you're in a hotel, and so you can't sleep like you would normally sleep. And, uh, and of course, the, it's hot. Like, you're not in a comfortable AC-type yeah. environment. And so I woke up with a headache, and I think it was because I oh, didn't no. drink enough water yes. the, yes, uh, the day before so see we try and when we travel we try and take as much of our house as we can so by that i mean our pillows we okay. like pack our pillows in the in the suitcase and that'll actually make such a big difference sure yeah 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 kind of makes me feel like i'm at home right, <laughs> right. when i'm not yeah, yeah exactly so this is the first festival for you and this is uh, kind of unique to that integrity music has done this year because um the worship tent is non-stop music yeah. Like, it's not just there's an artist at this time and a few hours later there's another artist and that's it for the day. Like, this is nonstop. And so this has been different for us as a radio station because there's nonstop traffic. People yeah. walking in and out of the worship tent wanting to be a part of the experience and then going off and going into rides or going to another concert somewhere else. This is phenomenal. Like, I, Integrity Music um, hosting this thing as, as I think one of the most brilliant things that Kingdom Bound has yeah. ever done. I'm really excited to be a part of it yeah. today. And this you said this is your first festival so I, i'm i'm kind of curious but you might not know the answer is this is this the norm at a christian music festival like i i don't think it is i think normally it's just the headliners and the main stage they don't have this other thing happening on the side i believe so i've never heard of it like that having a separate tent like a worship tent 24 i mean not 24 7 but but all non-stop day. yeah yeah non-stop yeah. so i think it's a really cool thing and i think if anyone wants to join they can yeah in between rides at six flags and I all think the rest. <laughs> I think more Christian festivals should kind of uh, consider adopting that yeah. that idea. It's it's a lot of work, but if you get a company like Integrity involved that kind of organizes the artists and yes. organizes that front end stuff and then of course you still need your your audio people yes. and tech people and all that other stuff. Um, uh, s- uh, there's a little rumor going around that you've written a few songs here and there. Yes. A few songs. I love writing songs. Um I believe I've heard that it's a couple of hundred, but do you know what the count is? I actually don't. No? <laughs> I mean, it's not something you keep track of. No. No. Okay. I'm just curious. 
Um, you've done a lot of co-writing as well. Yeah. Would you say you've co-written more than you've written on your own? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you've written for a lot of prominent artists. So can you just name drop a few, just so people know who oh, Mitch Wong is? Um, well, CC Winans. Yeah. Never heard uh, of her. <laughs> uh, Brooke Lidgetwood. Yeah. Brandon Lake. Yeah. Just great. These are people. all. These yeah. are all. Uh, current artists it's yeah. like it's not like nobody oh that was an artist from 20 years ago like people know who these people yeah. are right yeah so that's pretty awesome and uh, didn't you win a grammy or two as well with some of those co-writes yeah it was for the song believe for it that yeah. cc winans recorded and that was just such an encouragement to us because we'd written that song with duan who's also here with integrity today and kyle lee and cc and we wrote that song and then it just went and did like reach so many more people than I ever anticipated. And it was just really encouraging to see how it encouraged other people. And um, So you weren't expecting it? Not at all. And the crazy thing is, so I'm from Australia. I hope you can still tell with my accent. Um, but we moved here three and a half years ago and we pretty much couldn't go back home because we didn't have our green cards and we needed green cards to go back home and get back into the States. Right. And a few months before we um, believe for it, we met with our immigration lawyer and he said, you know, let's take a look at your case and see what we can sh like present to the government to give you um, a good chance of getting a green card, which is permanent residency. Yeah. And um, he said... A Grammy nomination isn't enough. You would actually have to win one to get one. <laughs> and then that's just not yeah, good enough, right? Fast forward a few months and Believe For It gets nominated and and then it wins on the night. And it was just really special to us because of course it was really encouraging and to be I guess to have the song and that message recognized in that way. Um, but I remember looking to my wife Steph and just smiling and going, This is literally God making a way for us yeah. to go home and see our families. This is your ticket home. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So it was really a miracle story for us and we're really grateful. Was that uh, probably bigger for you than the Grammy itself? Honestly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can, t I can we, tell it in your voice. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. We, I never anticipated I wouldn't see my family for three years and it ended up that way and right. it just, I mean, the pandemic, I guess, did a lot of things that we didn't expect but... Uh, it was just so good to be able to go home and see my family and reconnect. So it was really special. Now, you have uh, obviously done a lot of collaborations. Um, I've found, and, and maybe you can, because you've been in the business as well, maybe you can uh, kind of speak to this a little bit. I found that uh, a lot of successful collaborations have been a great way to introduce a new artist. Uh -huh. uh, or reintroduce an artist that you haven't heard from in a long time, like reinvent your career type yeah, thing. Yeah. Have you seen that as well? I've seen that a lot. I think Nashville and even broader than Nashville, just in America in general, there's so much collaboration. Yeah. And I love that people, I, f I feel like more than ever, people are willing to collaborate and just, it's not about personal brand anymore. It's just about let's have fun and let's, let's sing a really good message together. And it's been really fun to collaborate with people, not only in the writing space, but singing as well. Right. Because a lot of, that has come from just songwriting and we'll be writing a song and then all of a sudden they're like why don't you just come and sing this with us right because we both love singing and it's just really fun i think it's a really nice way of just carrying a testimony together i i think the collaboration aspect too is is well well before well pre COVID as well. Like I saw this before COVID, although COVID yeah. probably helped it a bit. I think it did with the help. online stuff. Yeah, you know? I think it's actually gotten more. Yeah, in the past, at least the past three years, I just feel like collaboration has gotten to a really amazing level where it's just it's everywhere. Have you ever written a song with someone or other people, and you kind of initially started with that song with you know one of the people in your group with them in mind as to be. As, as the person that's going to sing the song and then when you're done it's like you know this isn't your song anymore this is his song or her song actually probably not that often no yeah because except I think, the one it was your own song right <laughs> yeah because well most of the songs that I've released have either been songs that I've written in the past and no one took up right or songs that I just wrote by myself so 
I think as a songwriter, normally I'm writing with an artist and that's when you get to really talk to them and find out what's in their heart to say and how do you help them express that. And I think it's very specific to that artist in the room. But sometimes we can just write songs and they'll just sit there and no one will ever record them. But all right, th- that happened to one of the songs I released called Still on the Throne. And <clears throat> we had written that three years before I released it and no one had ever taken it. But it was so special to all of us who wrote it because we actually wrote it after a really tragic situation. Um, my friend was a worship pastor and he was over this guy who had just lost his wife after she gave birth to their first child. And it was just, he didn't know how to lead him through that situation. And I remember the night before we wrote that song, he just said in his kitchen, like, all I can think in moments like these when it's just so tragic and it doesn't make sense is, I just know that Jesus is still on the throne and I have to hold on to that. And I remember we wrote a song about that to give to this this man and yeah, no one no one took it but it was it held a really special place in my heart so it was really cool to have an avenue to get that out I know for you personally in addition to the whole green card issue um, you've um, released your own album recently Um, so with this new season in your life would you find that you're spending more time on your own songs now or is is the collaboration aspect still a big part of it I think the collaboration part is still the main... I mean, that's the main way I write songs. Yeah, and, and, and I, I think you're known that. for that too, yeah. right? But I mean, I'm just saying, I think once you release your own stuff, it's like, okay, I know. How, and I where was do you very, take this? Yeah. yeah, I was very aware of that. And I think with this project that I released in February, it was so specific. It was very conceptual. And I remember one night I had this sleepless night. I couldn't go to sleep until 6 a.m. and I got... You should talk to my wife. She has that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought I'd throw that I'm in there. I'm sorry for her. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got like nine song ideas and they all they all fit together in one theme. And it was it's about death and resurrection and, and sowing and reaping. So that project was so specific that I'm not really like at, a, at the point of going, let's write for me because I think stuff that I want to sing is just... I have to wait on the right theme and the right idea that I feel really passionate about. Right. Yeah. Um, your debut album released, what was it, February? February, Is that what you're saying? yeah. Okay. Um, that obviously a new process for you. Yeah. Because as you say, most of your career has been this collaboration thing, writing with others and, and whatnot. So what, I mean, what has changed and, and what have you learned from this new season, like this change in your life, this, this new way of doing business? Yeah, I've learned a lot from releasing an album and I think most of it is I just res- I really respect artists on a whole new level because it took so much effort and it and there's a lot of moving there's parts, a right? lot of moving parts yeah. and a lot of investment and a lot of care going into every every lyric, every chord, every all the production and I think what I learned was it was just a relief <laughs> to get it out because I had those songs for so long and when it was finally time for it, for them to be released, it was really nice to just be able to like release them, let them go out of my hands and just see what God did through them and it's been really encouraging. I think I've always been encouraged when I've written songs and I'll read YouTube comments or, or something about how the songs have helped people. And I think there's just another layer on top of that when you sing it and, and you carry something, you carry a message that you really believe in. It's been really encouraging to see people ministered to by the songs. So, With all the moving parts and obviously the strategic thinking that needs to happen and be put in place to release an album, um, I mean, was it worth the effort, I suppose? And, and would you do it again? Absolutely. Yeah. And I really felt that this album, I I was waiting on God's timing to release music because I've known for a long time that I love songwriting and that's definitely part of what God's called me to do. But I was never as sure with singing and I wanted to wait until I was really sure that God had called me to do this. So it was, it was good to wait and I think... Um, what I loved about the process was it was really grounded in obedience. And I, I really felt like God said, okay, I want you to be responsible for these songs and take care of them and, and just be faithful with the little. 
So I'm pretty much just waiting for another... I've got a few ideas, but I'm waiting for another thing to be faithful with. And right. it's, it's a really nice experience. And I think when you do it that way, it's really freeing and liberating because you're not trying to get as many streams as possible or, or, or it's not about the numbers or the success, but it's just about saying yes to God and, right. and letting him do the rest. So it's been, it's actually been really fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting you say that about not caring. I mean, obviously you care f- a little bit, Yeah. Uh, but, but it's not certainly not a focus. And, and uh, I've, I've shared this on my show many times about my love hate relationship with social media because yeah. I really I really can't stand it like the, like the amount of effort that people expect you to put into it yes and like why like why bother like I understand it's sharing your life and sharing what you're going through and, and whatnot and maybe that's more important from a from a, a musical artist point of view than just a, a lone radio guy like me or something like that I, I just have better things to do with yeah. and not trying to sound arrogant or ignorant no, I'd rather I'm have a face to face conversation with you than, than texting back and forth or PMing back and forth on social Absolutely. media you know yes saying? I've got a 30 minute limit on my social media every day oh you, so you've put an actual yes. re- a restriction on there yes that's awesome and it's great because yeah. it, it just means there's no mindless scrolling I'll, I'll connect as much as I want to connect but then after that it's done <laughs> yeah I spend a lot of my social time first thing in the morning so I'm a, I'm a morning person I do the morning show at the radio station so yeah. my social time for the most part will be maybe 20 minutes nice uh, as far as focused social media time yeah. and then for the balance of the day it's if I get time here and there I'll jump on there for, yeah. for whatever but other than that I, I really don't care yeah and the funny thing is is, is I watch you know and I, I don't have huge numbers or anything like that but I watch my Instagram as an example it's like you know, I got all these new followers, and it's like I'm not really posting anything. I don't know why you guys are following me. But yeah, but I just find it's it in funny. anticipation. Yeah, I <laughs> I watch certain people or organizations spend a lot of time and a lot of focus and a lot of structure and a lot of energy uh, trying to get it with content, and then and then I and then they get no extra followers or no likes and yeah. stuff, and I and I think well, I'm not doing anything, and it's working for me, so I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's just in general, I think as a creative it's unhealthy for me to be focusing on numbers all the time because right. really what I, my priority is is expressing in a creative way what god has put in my heart and i think if we if we always focus back on success and numbers it just reminds me of when god sees david and is like i don't see things like man sees god looks into the heart he sees on a, in a completely different way and i feel like there's a big pressure in today's society that man's way of looking thing at things is well this song has had this many streams and and the youtube video has this many views but i think as creatives it's just really important to remember just have fun in creating right and and god can take it where wherever he wants to take it i think we can do our best at stewarding it and and taking care of it but there's a level where you just have to surrender it to god so your new album is out. Uh, do you find it odd and strange that people will come up to you and say, I love your new song? And, and like, what would go through my mind? Because I'm a very analytical type person. What would go okay. through my mind is, well, hang on. You're calling it a new song, but I wrote it three years ago. Like, do you find that strange? I actually find it really strange when people, if I, if I just bump into them and they've listened to it and they say, I just wanted to let you know that I listened to the album and loved it that has been really really weird for me because one how do you have time to like listen that you would take the time to listen just means so much to me so it's really strange but um so it's, what's it's your response encouraging. To like what's I'm, your i'm just like thank you so much for listening yeah and i'm so glad it's you know been a blessing and yeah it's just it's really nice to connect with people that way i've i've heard and i and way back when i uh, there was a uh, a lady that uh, sang in my church and she was a phenomenal singer and she didn't know how to handle um, people appreciating her her ministry her uh, singing uh, her minute like she just had a problem with people coming up and say I loved your song and she didn't know how to handle that yeah and she would always downplay it saying oh you know it's uh, you know it was nothing and oh well you know whatever and and then she learned that what she should really do is is thank them 
yes. for for expressing their appreciation for the song. But then, because she didn't want to be glorified, she wanted God to be glorified. The way she described it to me was she would take all these thank yous and at the end of the day give them all back to God. Which yes. I thought, wow, what a great way of looking at it because it's it's not us, right? Like we can, there's people in different jobs and different capacities, different organizations that do different things. But yeah. but there's everybody. It's like it's like the tree, and we're all different branches and stuff. We're all doing our part, and and I can't be the leaf if I'm the branch, right? Yeah. And vice versa. Yeah. So I guess for you, that would be a little different now because you've come from one side of writing behind closed doors yep. in a sense. Yeah. And now you're out uh, in front of people. Yeah. Are and you- I find that I, I relate to that lady because I've always found it uncomfortable when people compliment me. Or, right. Or, but it sounds like she might have listened to this sermon by Bill Johnson from Bethel. Or maybe they just both had the, the same revelation, but he described it as every compliment and every accolade is just every every encouragement is like a crown that we can give to him at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah. And I think it, that's it's healthy because one, you don't want to be like I think false humility is like sneaky because it's it's okay to be to be grateful for what God has done through you. And he says something really funny. Like, sometimes people go, oh, no, it was all God. And then his response was like, well, it wasn't that good, <laughs> which is true. So sometimes... Oops. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes I think it's just healthy. And I think the Bible talks about gifts of encouragement. There, there are people who are gifted to encourage. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we need to let people do that. Because if we don't and we just play it down and we kind of refuse that encouragement, then we, we're not letting them put like express something in their heart a a gift of encouragement so i think it's i've grown to just say thank you so much and like glory to god or or even just like i'm so glad that ministered to you it's 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 definitely been a journey for me as well (laughs) i know of uh people artists whether it's in the christian community or secular mainstream um music world that are are singer songwriters so they they write songs they sing songs and, and some of them are, I'll call them closet musicians, and I'll mm-hmm. qualify that, where they, they come up with an album, but they never work the album. They never, they never perform in public. Mm-hmm. Are you the person that will take your music now and be in front of a crowd, given the fact that you've always been behind closed doors writing these songs? Yes, because I think when, when I, f- I felt the download for these songs, I felt a responsibility to go not only get them produced, not only craft them, but sing them and take the message of of these songs out into the world so even being here today I'm going to be singing one of the songs called Bloom today and I'm really excited to share that message of just the kingdom of God being in bloom in us and encouraging people to branch out from the four walls of the church and take the gospel outward so it, it's nice to have a message to take somewhere and what what has that been like for you because that's obviously a change as well now, now you're the you're the lead singer now. Like yeah. You're you're up there giving direction to the rest of the band, yeah. and you were probably in the sidelines before. So what's that been like? That change? It's been it's been nice. I think I've actually led worship for maybe it's been longer than you would think, but I've never released stuff. Right. So you, you've never re- been the one on natural st- to me. You've never to, been the the one on stage saying, "This is a song I wrote." Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Although I hope you're not doing that. <laughs> no, no, because that's like, uh, it's like, you know, pushing in your face. This is my song, folks. Yes. You know, it's like go listen to it, download it, stream it today. Exactly. You know? So that's good to hear. Yeah. So, uh, so you've written uh, a few songs here and there. Um, is there is there any secrets that you can pass along to write a good worship song? I mean, that's wow. a loaded question because I'm sure there's a lot of things that you could suggest. There's right? a lot. I think one of the secrets would be if you want to write a good worship song, find out what worship means. Find out what the Bible talks about worship. And for me, that's been the first mention of the word worship in the Bible was when Abraham went up the mountain to offer his son Isaac. That's the first mention of the word worship. And it's it's always to do with... That's a pretty big sacrifice. Yeah, it's a <laughs> sacrifice. And I think sometimes... We want to write worship songs, but we're not really giving anything to God. So I think... Right. Um, but then, uh, if you're not giving anything to God, I would question whether 
that's actually a worship song or just a Christian song. Yes. Right? Yes. You know, like I, I get people asking me on the radio, like, do you play worship music? And in fact, I have a, I have a weekly feature called Worship Wednesday where we'll play a worship song at 7 a.m. every Wednesday morning as part of my show. Mm. And I will go through our music library and I actually have to do some thinking to determine is this actually a worship song or yep. not. And sometimes it's an obvious worship song because of the artist. Yep. And other times it's like, well, this isn't an artist that would be known for worship songs, but if you listen to the lyrics this, to this song, it's this is this is a worship song. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I guess when it comes to writing a worship song, it's first qualifying yeah. if it's actually a worship song or not. Yeah. And and then the next step after that. I mean everybody listening right now is probably thinking, okay, we got we got this guy on, on the line here. Let's find out. Let, what are the secret tips? What are the secrets to writing that great song? Well, I started writing songs when I was 15 and I learned piano. I started teaching myself piano. I think it's really helped melodies for me was I, I used to play piano for hours and hours at home and that really developed melody for me. And, and probably harmony too, and like harmony. knowing the chords and yes, stuff. Yeah. Yes, and I think I also grew up listening to pop music mm -hmm. like all the time and I would I would kind of dissect why do I love this song so much so those are some tips Other, otherwise it's just finish the songs I think right. that's that's such a big one because I think that's I've, hard yeah, that, that's hard for a I've lot grown, of singers I've grown the most as a songwriter when I'm I've been diligent to finish a song because if if I just have 50 unfinished songs then I haven't learned how to finish one. Right. And that's huge. So I think just being patient and being willing to wrestle with the song is, uh, is all part of it. Finishing the song, I think, is big, a, a bigger obstacle for songwriters than you would think. And the reason mm. why I say that is because I, we've talked to lots of songwriters and, and musicians and people in the music business. And what I hear a lot of is, is all of these unfinished songs or... They've got a song, they finished it, and then a month later, ah, uh, they're going to tweak it a bit more. And, oh, they got to finish it. Oh, yeah. what about adding this? And, and so it's never quite finished, even though it was fine a month ago. Yeah. They just think it could be better and could be better. And maybe it's because they don't want to have regrets listening to the song a year from now, thinking, oh, I wish I had done this. Yes. Right? So it's, it's, I would suggest maybe it's not just finishing it, but letting go of it. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. Knowing that, okay, I've done what I'm going to do. And, and, and then if you have other ideas incorporate that into another yep. song or something. Be I'm, not, I'm not a songwriter. I'm just yeah. throwing this out there. Because it's possible. I heard a great analogy. Uh, Michelangelo's statue of David. There, there comes a point where if you put the chisel to that statue anymore, it's going to be less perfect. Yeah. And I think we do that because we get anxious. What if, what if it's like, is it the best it can be? And sometimes you just have to put the chisel down and go, okay, I'm going to leave this statue now. That's the way it's going to be. And then go on a new song. Yeah, well, there you go. Thank you, Mitch, for uh, hanging with me. Appreciate Thanks so much it. for having me. A lot, having of, fun. Me. A lot of fun. Thank you. Hey, listen, that was awesome. I'm so glad that you had a chance to chat with Mitch. Um, I have yet to meet him, and now I'm really looking forward to meeting him. Well, I've met him, and you will enjoy your meeting with Mitch Wong. Um, very, <laughs> very talented person, as you know, with, uh, you know, Grammy-winning artist, um, yes. You don't really hear him as, you know, known as a, like, he's not a household name, but right, right. but the fact that he's got, a, you know, a few Grammys under his belt and he, you know, you're hearing more and more of him now with leading worship and uh, part sure. of the integrity music umbrella, if you want to call it that. Um, I think we're going to be hearing more and more from him. Great songwriter. And uh, like you said, uh, really enjoyed that conversation with Mitch Wong mm -hmm. on Between the Grooves. Well, look at the time. It is that time again for some artist advice. Who we got advice coming from this week? We got Madison from Elevation Rhythm. <laughs> God has called you and designed you for this specific place. And I think, you know, as artists and musicians, it's really easy to get caught up in, you know, who do we want to be? Who do we think we should be? And mm -hmm. when God has placed a calling on our lives, I think we just need to stay close to him and walk, allow him to walk with you through that journey and allow him to take you where he wants to take you, not exactly where you think you should go, but just mm. trusting that, you know, he knows exactly what's best for your life and he knows 
um, he knows where he wants to take you. So just stay faithful and stay close to the Lord and, and allow him to speak to you through those moments. So I just think it's great to, um, she just reiterated the fact that it's important that we trust him um, and trust him with our lives, knowing that he's got a plan. He's had a plan from the beginning of time. And um, we were created on purpose for purpose. And um, yeah, I just, I'm thankful for the reminder. You've heard the music competitions and you've heard the judges say things like, make that song your own. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's become somewhat cliche, but uh, that kind of uh, is what I hear Madison saying, uh, you know, who do we want to be? Um, but we we can't be mimicking other artists. We can't be no. you know, taking their styles or, or the way they sing a song and, and just, you know, mimicking being a parrot of what they already do because you don't need right. more, you don't need more than one having said that mm-hmm. um it's there's nothing wrong with admiring and taking some of the positives uh out of right. what they do and maybe learning from it maybe it'll help your career but but certainly not being who they are right be yourself mm-hmm. so that's that's yeah. kind of what i got out of what she had to say there thanks for that madison and that is it we are out of time as you have suggested um that wraps up our road trip series on between the grooves we're going back to uh studio conversations uh, for mm-hmm. next week so uh join us once again and don't forget to follow us wherever you are on your social media and subscribe to the podcast as well it just helps us reach more people for listening to Faith Strong Today's Between the Grooves podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, would you consider sharing it with your friends, rating our podcast, or giving us some love on your socials to your amazing friends and followers will only help us reach more people. We'd also love to hear from you and share your feedback in an upcoming episode. Send your video or written message to Aisha and James on Facebook and Twitter at Between Grooves or email us anytime. Hello at faithstrongtoday.com. 